What is up guys, Dan for the Zayn Madden YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a formula to bomb cover four palms for easy chunk yardage. But before we do that, guys, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you guys take the time to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads coming your way here on the Zayn Madden YouTube channel. If you guys want to watch me play Madden live, you guys can find me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Zayn Madden. The link for that channel is in the description, as is a link for my ebook bundle. If you guys are looking for a different way to play the game on both offense and defense, you will get my entire single back wing tight U, wing tight, and wing tight Z offense out of the Washington Redskins, and my entire comprehensive 3-4 bear defense where I show you guys how to stop all the main metas in Madden 20 at my pay hip link below in that description. Upon checkout, you will receive all the content, over three hours of how-to videos to improve your Madden game. No waiting for me to go live on my Twitch channel. No waiting for my moderators to send you guys the links. When you guys subscribe on my Twitch channel, you can get them right away for a lower price than what you would find on my Twitch. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's get into today's video. We're gonna be looking at a cover for Palms Beater. This is one of the more problematic coverages in the game. A lot of players are using it at a high level to beat some of the compression-based offenses. We're actually gonna create some compression concepts that will beat cover four Palms here today. Uh, gonna be kind of two by two compression. So if you think about what two by two means, it means two options to the left, two options to the right, and we're gonna try to keep it compressed. So you could do this out of a kind of a tight offset formation. You could do this out of a formation like the Y off trips paths, which is what we're gonna show it to you first out of, uh, but you can kind of create this on your own. So this is going to be a concept that you guys could probably find a way to apply to your offense. We've done a lot of Y off trips paths this week. Uh, one of my good friends, Cole 45, he runs his offense out of this. He has ways to bomb every single covered shell in the game. This tip is coming to you from my other good friend, MXC Jimmy, uh, who runs this offense. And this is going to be a tip that you basically you are going to need a hot route master for. Um, you're really going to use two routes that uh, you could get away with two slot apprentices. So if you, uh, you know, run an offense that already has two of those, then you could probably get away with doing it that way. But honestly, pound for pound, hot route master, it's a dime a dozen. You could get the, the golden ticket quarterbacks at this point in, in Mutt. If you guys play regs or CFM, obviously you're going to need a slot apprentice for this. So uh, kind of figure out a way to, to make this work in your offense. So what we're going to do is I'm going to choose to play Pat's X curl because it actually has a curl route. We're going to use that on this play. And uh, we'll go up against that cover four palm. So let me go ahead and call that. And the way that you're going to run this it, out of this formation anyways, is you want the tight end to the wide side of the field. We're going to place him on a streak, block the running back. Then your X receiver and your right bumper, the two slot routes are gonna be on crossers. That's why the hot route master is probably preferred. And what we're gonna do is we're going to motion this curl route across the formation, snapping it right as he crosses the left tackle. So right there. And that's going to basically free up both our right bumper or, and or rather, our other crosser across the field. And what ends up happening essentially on this is you get a uh, poor negotiation of the, the coverage uh, swapping. So this is a match principle. It's a zone drop. It's designed to allow guys to drop into zones when they're not being attacked by a vertical route. But when routes go vertical off the line, they need to play man to man and cover that route as it runs. So as you take a look at this here, you're gonna get this swap. And it ends up with, right here at this point, we see that we have this crossing route wide open. We're just gonna throw a little feathery lob over the top and uh, get that open. But a lot of times you'll actually result in the X receiver getting open. And that's all going to be related to the timing of your motion snap. So as you go through and you practice this, you're gonna notice that sometimes that receiver, the X receiver kind of gets jammed to the inside. When he gets jammed to the inside, he's going to end up being, um, you know, wide open. Um, when he gets jammed to the outside, typically you're looking at your tight end and your other crosser that should both be open for the one play score. Um, so just kind of pay attention to how that X receiver gets jammed in this particular setup um, when you run it. So that solo receiver, he's not really a solo receiver because we're motioning the curl across. It just depends on how he gets jammed. He gets jammed here to the inside. He's going to be so open on this play. So you see how we get him wide open. So that release of the solo receiver is we drop a wide open touchdown there. Hopefully that doesn't happen to the Bucks next year. Um, when you watch that X receiver in this set get released, that is what's gonna tell you who you should be looking at. If he gets released to the inside, he's gonna be wide open. If he gets released to the outside, you're looking to the right bumper. So you see right here, 
X, the tight end, are both wide open. I could have thrown the ball to uh, the tight end. The tight end appears to always be open in this setup. So this is what makes this such a great route combination is Brady's missed a throw and as Evans has dropped a wide open touchdown. Uh, you can definitely see the concept in play though here. So again, as we run this, kind of snapping the ball, we get a jam to the inside. We know X is going to be open. And he is. Easy up pass lead, rack it, one play score. Very, very easy. Now, I do want to show you something else. There is something very, very weird about this uh, formation. The player model build of your slot receiver on the right side of the field matters. Uh, the locomotion matters on this. So you'll notice what I had motion B across the formation. This slot player Godwin resets, and he resets quickly. This allows me to get into this play, run it, get the ball out. So you see here, X is open. Uh, that's easy one play score. But now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do something crazy. And you wouldn't think this would matter, but it does. I'm actually going to flip-flop Godwin and Evans on this play. And I want you to notice how the player resets in the slot. So for this particular formation, we're going to sub Godwin and Evans back. We're going to go and do the exact same setup. And do... The same motion. Now, I want you to watch Evans. Evans does this little stutter, and that makes snapping the ball a lot harder, and it changes the dynamic of the way this play works. Now, no, no one is open. It's that extra little hitch in his reset that causes this to not allow you to snap the ball in the spot that we were snapping originally. So, this player is actually very important to this play because he needs to be a player that resets quickly. It might have to do with height. It might have to do with player size, weight, things like that, locomotion style. I don't really know yet, but pay attention to that. You see how he does that? And then he stutters again. Now I have to wait like a full second after he gets set and it doesn't allow me to snap the ball in that window that I'm looking for. And it completely changes how the coverage is played on this play. So it gets absolutely bagged for no reason other than pre-snap locomotion on the offense. So we go back and we go ahead and sub the other player back in you're going to notice that we're back to normal. So go ahead and do this again here. I'm going to sub Godwin back in here. Evans back here. I'm going to go back and call that same play. Crazy how bizarre this works. These are the little things that you have to lab in the game. You know, I get a lot of people that are like, this doesn't work for me. And I'm like, well, I mean, are you running it this way? And they say, yeah. And it's like, oh, well, something so small as the locomotion style of that slot receiver can change how this play works. So you notice how Godwin set. This is going to allow me now to snap the ball right here and get everybody open. I mean, you see how this works. A is open. X is open. Just super easy. Both of them for a one-play score. And the success of that play is purely dictated by the fact that I have a different player in the slot with a different locomotion style that allows him to get his feet set because you have to, once you have a guy set, he has to be set for a second with the exception of the motion guy who's running lateral to the line of scrimmage off the line of scrimmage. So one Mississippi is applying to Godwin, but not Johnson. That allows me to snap the ball right here. He gets jammed to the outside. We know that Godwin's going to be open. Well, preferably if you can throw it over the top of that linebacker. So again, you're still watching the jam of that outside receiver to determine where you're going with the football at the snap. So again, you always watch how X is released. That solo receiver is released. He gets released to the inside. You're looking one way. If he releases to the outside, you're looking the other. Right here, we actually got a lot of bumping, so the it actually got smothered there. Um, the tight end and the, the slot receiver kind of bumped into their men and didn't get the separation they were looking for. So again, guys, you, get, you do need to practice the motion snap timing, preferably to get this receiver Evans jammed to the inside rather than the outside. Super important. See right here, he gets him to the inside. That's, that's going to tell us that, you know, A and X are our guys that we're looking for. Now, right there, we threw the ball and the guy guarding X ended up peeling back and guarding that. But if you hold onto the ball just a little bit longer, you know that that's going to be a one play score. So go ahead and take this to the lab. We're going to go ahead and show this to you out of another formation and show you how you can take it to the lab uh, here in this video as well. So you see right here, it's jammed to the inside. Now we're looking we're looking at Evans. We know that that's going to be open. We throw it over the top. The tight end was over, uh, oh, open over the top as well. Easy one play score. So your opponent can't be two spots at once while running this palm. So when they do run this poems, this is where you're going to go with this formula. Now, let's go ahead and apply it to other formations. I talked about at the top of the video. This is a two-by-two two compression style thing. So, um, you know, if you want to, you can kind of create this route combination from other sets. It may not work the exact same way, but you should be looking to get guys open uh, in general. So let me go ahead and go under center, which is where I prefer to be. I'm going to go to ace 
close, but we're going to set up a very similar thing here. So, palms. And again, we, we basically know that the route combination is two crossers. Wide side, inside player on a streak. Short side, inside player on a curl. Now, when we run this, that's how it works. X against the linebacker, you're, you're going to throw that over the top of the linebacker and rack catch it. Pretty easy, right? Um, you know, it's not going to work the exact same way against every formation, but it is something that, in general, you could apply it in your offense through, through a couple sets and try to figure out what works best for you. You see right there, um, probably should have thrown, uh, you, know, a low, you know, a low ball in that crosser. So the other thing, too, is on these routes, crossing specialist is huge. If you can get a crosser, crossing route specialist, that can really help with some of those throws in traffic just because it'll allow you to, you know, um, catch it low on the sideline. So you see right here how, like right here, I could throw this little low ball and basically it works like a rollout corner. You're going to be able to, you know, make that catch in front of that player all the time. So definitely make sure that you guys are trying to apply this. Uh, you could apply it to like tight slot type formations or tight offset type formations. So if I were to go into the Patriots offense, I don't know if they have, they do have tight slots. Let's go ahead and try to apply it here. Uh, again, similar principles. So palms, um, you know, your route combination would look like this. And you see how E is open, X is open. Nice swat right there. But again, you see how the 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 missed matching principles apply here. Uh, on and off receivers can matter a little bit. So, you know, with X being on the line of scrimmage, that might kind of change how the, the route combination works compared to X being off the line of scrimmage and vice versa. Um, see right here. See how B's open, X was open. So both of those routes in that situation, you're definitely going to have to make kind of like a contested throw. So if you're running this style offense, make sure you guys are starting to think about crossing route specialist uh, in your mix because there are a lot of players out there that actually do run the crossing specialist. Uh, I know that the Trey Y Flex users, when they run dagger, use crossing specialists. I know that uh, some of the bunch players are starting to use crossing specialists as well for their wide receiver post plays. Um, those are things that definitely matter. So, um, you, you know, that way when the match coverage um, reacts or responds to the blown coverage a little bit more quickly and somebody matches it, at least you have leverage to get that catch with that ability that's associated with it. So you're either going to have a one play bomb or you're going to have a catch in traffic associated with that ability. So uh, hopefully you guys had, uh, enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys found this informational. Hopefully I, I showed you guys a hole in the whole motion thing with the Y off trips pass because that's very bizarre as well. Those are little things you have to look at when you're playing this game. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, drop them below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys tomorrow with our next video upload. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab in. Good luck.